What is up guys? Welcome back to Cold Town. Today we are going to be uh, showing you the new meta decks. Um, one of them is the old meta decks, but everything else is new. So here is an Elixir Golem Earthquake deck, uh, a very similar deck dominated in the, uh, the the CRL World Seeding Tournament, which is a 1v1 player, or multiple 1v1 players from every team uh, to decide the seeding for Worlds played. And an Earthquake Elixir Golem dominated, uh, Earth Golem, Elixir Golem deck dominated, and this is a similar deck just with Battle Healer. They don't, they won't be using Battle Healer, so uh, that's the only difference. And this deck super strong. Um, and then this deck is amazing. I love this deck. It's uh, it's basically the old Tombstone one, but Bomb Tower synergizes so with the deck. Lots of NATO value, um, and th this deck is just amazing using the new Buff Knight uh, or the Buff Knight. And then this is another Elixir Golem deck, a little bit different with a, another small spell, and then a Fireball. And that was just to showcase healer is really good with battle uh, with uh, with elixir golem. Even even though on ladder I'm using it at level 11, I can still win with it because uh, it's so good. And then we're gonna this is the only old deck that just still fits really well. It counters it counters all this elixir golem crap. It's pretty good against battle healer too because uh, it can do well against night witches and uh, both these cards if you handle it well are pretty good. Unfortunately, I already recorded this video, but I forgot to hit record. I had an amazing video where I, I lost one game. Um, it, it was just kind of brutal there because level looks, level 11 looks are gone was was tough. I wasn't able to get a ton of damage, but everything else was so good. I played all these different decks on ladder and I won with all but one game. And then I played that deck again and won with it right away. Um, we're gonna go over the replays of the wins because I, I'm, I'm heartbroken and I honestly I don't uh, Elixir Golem I can show you how to play it and I don't really like playing it at level 11 on ladder though if it was level 12 I would be fine with it but level 11 is just kind of annoying like I beat this guy though he and he had max Elixir Golem and we're just gonna we're gonna go through the replays quickly and talk about uh, what what I did and uh, and how to play the decks I, I like I said I would love for this to be live I did record this just now with it live but I forgot to hit the record button or it glitched out. I, I'm not sure which. Um, so that was unfortunate. But uh, I hope you guys still enjoy. And we're showing off these amazing new uh, decks on top ladder. So I started Baby Drag. He went Night Witch. I, I play uh, Magic Archer into it. If you if you go like... I don't like going E-Drag here too early. Because he actually... I didn't know this. But he actually would have just rocketed it. And that would have been bad for me. But I like to I like to have pressure other lane uh, there. And then if he ignores it, it does quite a bit of damage. And then I go Night Witch first to get bat spawning. And then I go for the uh, the 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 dragon. Unfortunately, my NATO comes out a little bit too late there. I am gonna have a counter push, but that's brutal. I didn't uh, I didn't have this deck. Even though it has an Electro Dragon, it's not the best counter to Sparky. Uh, and I don't have a big spell, so I couldn't get value value off all those troop stacking. It's kind of surprising he stacks so much. But I mean, I take half of his tower, and I have a massive Elixir lead, so this wasn't too bad. Yeah, that ended, ended up being a really good Sparky for him, but I know he had no Elixir once he Sparkied. He does eventually NATO, but, um, I mean, it's still just a ton of damage for me, so... And if this had been a maxed Elixir Golem, I actually would have taken this tower. Uh, as you can see, uh, my Baby Drag almost takes it anyway. So, overall, not bad. I'm a little bit behind Elixir-wise after that, but I also have a ton of damage on his right tower, so this isn't as bad as it looks. Um, and, of course, if I had had a max Elixir Golem, that would have went better. Uh, but yeah, he decides to go for this uh, this uh, uh, Sparky uh, offensive push, and then we get some really nice NATO here. So we NATO back. Look at the Magic Archer getting so much value on on those troops hitting everything, and then because the Elixir Golem dies, about uh, the Baby Drag retargets to the uh, the Sparky. That was a perfect a perfect defense there. And then here I played Elixir uh, Golem in the opposite lane in a Night Witch because I knew he was behind and he had already went Sparky, so he didn't have much Elixir. Uh, and then I go offensive in the opposite lane. His deck is a really heavy like single lane deck So we I end up earthquaking there to get rid of the sparky so that it couldn't kill my magic archer Eventually, and then we go double magic archer, and then he's just getting overwhelmed um, But yeah, I, I noticed I recognize that his deck is a single lane push deck that has a lot of value from NATO in a single lane And so we uh, we split push there and we're able to overwhelm him Also because the elixir uh, because of the really good defense Okay, I can't confirm the recording not being recording the first time wasn't actually my fault. It just quit for no reason, but we continue. Uh, I restarted my computer, and we go to the next one. All right, so we're going to go to this next Elixir Golem deck. <sighs> I've said this three times now, but uh, <laughs> the uh, this deck has good air defense, but also not good air defense at the same time. Uh, Magic Archer kind of meh, Night Witch kind of meh. 
E-Drag kind of meh. It's good against beatdown pushes, but not so much against quick uh, loom pushes like this. I mean, if I had had E-Drag in, in hand, it would have been much easier here. Um, but I end up having to sell out on the defense using all my elixir, and I barely defend in time. Other than Magic Archer shooting, the Baby Drag was nice because he ended up staying out of the Death Bomb. Um, and then my opponent's going to go... Uh, Gonna go uh, Prince here, and then I log so that Magic Archer is able to lock onto the tower for uh, three hits, and also so that it survives. But oh, lo and behold, the Prince survives with one HP. Didn't expect that. Um, honestly, I thought the Magic Archer would survive and kill it, but oh well. We're just gonna wait a bit, play a play a battle healer in the back for these archers. Um, and then I'm just gonna wait and see what he does. He goes for, uh, I'm not gonna play a Night Witch or an Elixir Golem into a Wizard or opposite lane. It's just kind of risky. So I'm just gonna be using my Fireball here. I, he doesn't really have a Fireball bait deck anyway. Uh, I can get d value on, def on defense and double Elixir on big, uh, balloon pushes, but not a big deal. Uh, that's a good Fireball for me. He ends up having to play, uh, Lumberjack, or he plays Lumberjack in the back and then I play Night Witch into it. Um, I, uh, Elix uh, Electro, or no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I go for the King Tower here, which is definitely the play, the King Tower activation with NATO, and then I just block. He ends up going Baby Drag, which is kind of an overcommit, and then he has to defend pretty heavily here. I possibly could have sold out and like instantly attacked left lane with Elixir Golem, but meh. I think the safest play was just to wait this out. Um, if he had played anything more expensive than Archers, like a Valk or something, I probably would have gone in, because then uh, I could have just waited and then Magic Archer like opposite lane for Valk. But anyway, just go... Uh, Battle Healer in the back. Also, when I go Battle Healer in the back, he's not going to play a card until he's at 10, so it's a good chance for me to like see where the Elixir's at. And I can see that I'm up uh, like two or three Elixir. Uh, I knew that once uh, he ends up playing that Light Prince. Um, and so I go for my Night Witch to get bad spawning, and then uh, Electro Drag, once again, should have just been a tiny bit higher. He actually got a really nice um, freeze off there. But that tower has more HP anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. I actually tried to pull the Prince there, and it doesn't quite work, but I kind of salvaged the situation by playing Battle Healer in front of the Night Witch. And this actually be, ends up being nice, because you know how the Elixir Golem was changed, is that it actually does a little bit more damage in its early forms now, and less damage in its uh, later forms. So by getting it to the tower at full HP by tanking with the Battle Healer, it actually just gets a ton of damage off before uh, uh, that last form. And in some ways it was a good thing that Battle Healer was in front. So consider sometimes putting Battle Healer in front of Elixir Golem, especially if like uh, the situation like that arises where you need to kite something with it. I would say it wasn't a bad situation here. I maybe could have just fireballed on defense, but I was just worried that I wasn't going to take tower. And that battle here was a little bit of a panic. I didn't need to do that. I could have just let the lizard walk on a tower and then play the battle here behind my ticking tower in the right lane. So a little bit of a, a screw up there. Um, I don't think the fireball on tower is bad. I think the battle healer, though, was late and bad. I think I thought maybe my tower would survive, but not quite. Uh, I, I use a log there to get everything lined up for the uh, electro drag, and I NATO back. That time, I, I needed the Electro Drag to be kind of low because I needed it to hit the uh, the Lumberjack. So that time, I don't think it was bad. Um, Battle Healer should have been a little bit higher by me there. Um, and then I played this Elixir Golem a little bit late. And apparently, that Night Witch, if it's not one tile higher, will go to the King Tower. I did not know that. Uh, I did not think it was going to go for King Tower there. So that's a misplay there. But this is a really nice uh, NATO Fireball. Electro Drag ends up going for the Archers too, so a little bit of a misplay by him. He didn't expect the NATO, I guess. And then I go ahead and preemptively play a Magic Archer. We know he had a bad freeze there, so we instantly go again. This time I do have a tank for the tower. And uh, he messes up and plays that uh, Valkyrie in the bad, a bad position, so my Magic Archer actually gets a lot of chip too. We go ahead and preemptively play a high uh, a high Electro Dragon. And then the second I see E-Wiz, after already playing Log, I'm going to go for that Fireball to get rid of all the troops. Plus E-Drag gets value on the NATO. And then once again, we're going to attack a low elixir on the counter push because that's what elixir golem is so good at. And I'm actually cycling back to a log. I play a magic archer and magic archer on offense is amazing with NATO. We're able to line it up for the magic archer to pierce the tower and to finish the game along with the elixir golem. And that was really nice. I liked that quite a bit. And as a result, there's another elixir golem deck we were able to take the dub with. I'm still so sad that you guys couldn't watch these games live. I, I, was, I was having fun with it. We were doing good. Moving up with the different decks every game. But the replays are good to go over too. There's more to learn when I'm able to talk after the fact than when I'm in the moment as well. So educational video for the win. All right. So cycling. This is an early, early elixir deck or early aggression, early, early game deck, I guess. Uh, we end up going for the skelly split and then a minor, and then we're just going to play Valk into his Valk. He kind of overestimates his battle healer here. 
Um, but we are going to bash just to get rid of it so we can't heal for too long. Sorry, Valk stays kind of healthy. He does end up arrowing, though, which is good because now he doesn't have arrows in hand for the, uh, the wall breakers. And this is actually insane. We go for the wall breakers minor. And because of that 1 HP Valk, the bomber actually stutters and doesn't get his auto attack off fast. And as a result, uh, he's able to actually hit the tower. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> because of that one HP Valk stutter, making him stutter, he doesn't take out the wall breakers, and we get so much damage as a result of it. Uh, Bomber to fully counter, we surround him with skellies. And then, we don't really have a good pressure hand here, so instead of attacking opposite, we're just gonna play into it. And then I'm actually gonna go for a magic archer, because he didn't really play anything. Uh, Valk slightly pushes it, gets some damage. Then he does go for a lightning. We go for bats. And then a bomb tower to deny damage. Uh, and then once again, I know I'm up because he went uh, fairly aggressive. Or not up. I know I'm up once he plays his bomber is what I meant to say. Um, and so I wait this out. I know his arrows are out of cycle, so I'm going to go wall breaker minor. And he does have Valk to counter them. But as a result, he, he doesn't have any elixir to really counter that minor way right away. And it's able to get a ton of value. Okay, so this is important. I, with a mega minion coming, Valk my Valk would have died if I had defended his Valk with mine. So instead, I'm going to go Magic Archer, and then uh, the Magic Archer and Skeletons would have fully countered. But he does go for a Lightning. But I know that's a super overcommit, um, and so I'm going to go in hard. But I'm not going to go Wall Breakers because I know he has arrows in hand. You can't stack. I could have gone... Uh, I already had Bats alive. Or, or no, I, I went with Bats because it was, it was in Cycle. Um, but you don't want to go both. It was one or the other. And then right here, to avoid giving him Lightning value. Didn't know it wasn't exactly in Cycle, I guess. Maybe it was a prediction by him. I, uh, I go Bomb Tower high because I didn't want it to be too close to the Magic Archer. I wasn't sure if he was back to it yet or not. Um, but maybe that was a good play by him. Maybe he thought I would trade a Lightning Block so he goes Bomber at the Bridge. So that was actually a pretty good play by him, but it is not enough for him to win. I, and I still defended fairly well uh, given the situation. And we were able to lock a Magic Archer and a Miner on the Tower there. Uh, but mostly, I usually you go opposite lane if they go on RG in the back, but I didn't have the right pressure cards for it. And I had already gotten so much damage from his overcommits. So we're able to take the win with that uh, that deck, which is so solid. And then finally, this was my favorite game. This new knight deck is so good with the buff knight. Um, and I had so much fun with this game. Uh, a really big graveyard tip that's going to be showcased in this game is when your opponent has poison and you know they need to defend with it. Like when they play a golem and you grave your opposite lane, which you're doing to pressure, there's a really good chance they're going to just poison. Uh, I do this all the time uh, if I'm playing a uh, poison golem deck. I'll just poison the graveyard and like try to hit the baby drag too if it's possible. Um, if they go like baby drag graveyard, uh, you have to defend if it's like a knight, I guess. But anyway, um, a big trick when someone has poison is to play your tank after the graveyard instead of having your tank tank for the graveyard because they're going to poison anyway which nullifies the graveyard regardless besides like two hits but if the graveyard skeletons are tanking then your troop will do more damage to the tower because it won't be taking damage uh, lots of people know that already but it is the key in how i win this game uh, along with really good defense so we uh we end up cycling this deck is really good in double elixir because it gets a lot of nato value and it's um not super heavy, but it's good in double elixir. It, graveyard's early game are kind of overcommits a lot of the times. Uh, right here, though, I start to think I'm going to go graveyard because I'm going to win the bridge battle, but then he goes mini P.E.K.K.A., which is good by him. Um, this mini P.E.K.K.A. was too low to King Tower activate, but that activation doesn't allow a, uh, a tower hit anyway, so it didn't really matter. Um, we'll just cycle a knight to not allow any damage and to kind of keep up pressure. Uh, I have to graveyard here with his hand. Um, he, and then I figure out his big spell is poison at this point in the game. And I do connect Knight there. He plays his Knight, which is a little bit late. We're just going to go for a low Ice Whiz and then a Poison. I didn't want I didn't want to play Barb Barrel because Barb Barrel would pop on top of the Battle Healer. And then it would heal both the Battle Healer and the Night Witch. So I go ahead and go to Poison and that uh, is, an, is enough. Although the Ice Whiz did get lower than I thought he would. Uh, we went Baby Drag same time. We're still going to pressure opposite lane. Uh, he didn't quite block it, but... Uh, oh, no, he did block. He did block. That was a good mini pack by him. But he still takes quite a bit of damage, and he has to do a lot to kill it because he didn't poison it. Um, so, not poisoning uh, got I me mean, quite a bit of damage. Uh, I know because I kind of overcommitted there because I had already played a Baby Drag same lane as the Golem. I can't really defend his Baby Drag. I need to just defend the right side big push, and as you can see, he still gets a little bit of damage. Um, I could have maybe activated King Tower off a of Golemite, but I don't think that was worth it. I'm just going to try to counter push off of this. He plays a Battle Healer. Um, and so I decide not to Graveyard into that and give him a big push. I'm just going to uh, Barbara all the lane. He ends up mini pecking it, so that worked beautifully. 
Uh, we're going to Bomb Tower here because we didn't really have anything else in hand. And it's going to take care of the Mini P.E.K.K.A. and the Battle Healer. So it's not a terrible one. But then I'm instantly going to go for a Knight Graveyard at the Bridge. This isn't because it was a good time to Graveyard. This is because my Bomb Tower is out of cycle. And I need to cycle back to it before he has enough Elixir for Golem. Um, and I do get a little bit of damage. And then he's going to have to count the Baby Drag. So it worked out really well. Um, I needed a pressure there to get back to Bomb Tower. That's why I pressured. Um, I'm just waiting a little bit here. And I'm going to check out... Uh, a bar barrel to, to counter the baby drag without my uh, elixir. Protect, always protect your ice was if you can. Um, and then I'm at full elixirs. I'm going to go for a graveyard on the left side because it has more damage there. Because um, I've done more damage to that side. And then I get a pretty good poison on a mini P.E.K.K.A. and a night witch. Uh, ice was is holding his own as well there. There's a lot of troops coming down so I'm going to have to bomb tower here. Um, just to be safe. And I know he doesn't have elixir because he just played so many troops as well. Um, I know he doesn't have elixir, and I'm also I'm also playing bomb tower here because once again I do not want to play a bar barrel on top of those healers and let them heal everything. Okay, and here's the here's the play that wins me the game. Even though this tower was healthy, we're gonna graveyard first, and then we're gonna baby drag because we know he wants to poison the graveyard. And as a result, look at how much damage that baby drag does. And he did do what I said he should do. He he uh, poisons where the baby drag is. If the baby drag had been tanking the tower, I would have done hardly any damage at all. But because I purposely let the graveyard tank, um, we were able to get a ton of damage. And in the meantime, I'm getting so much NATO value uh, since he had to use poison on defense and can't take, get rid of stuff. And once again, protect the Ice Wiz and then cycle back to another NATO. And NATO once again. And then uh, go for a second Ice Wiz and then the game was kind of over. I don't think I meant to play. I don't think I meant to play that bomb tower. I think I think I meant to play uh, an ice with or a baby dragon. I mean, and then he goes uh, night witch, and I have a ton of troops, so I'm just going to graveyard to pressure. If he had gone golem in front of the night witch, he would have lost tower before he could have taken. So uh, I, I pressure enough, but that tip, the tip of throwing down the tank uh, after the graveyard, letting the graveyard tank for like the baby dragon there was what won me the game. Uh, we were able to win off the tiebreaker, although we were about to finish the tower almost as well on the other side. Uh, so yeah, that was the big key to winning that game for sure. Uh, and s I'll, I'll go ahead and play one more live game with the graveyard deck because it's fun. <sighs> I really, I'm. It's unfortunate that uh, my my program kind of crapped out, but we'll get the dub. Let's see. Like I said, we're just going to kind of wait until double here and eventually play probably a knight. I think knight's probably uh, a little bit better than, than ice was as a starting play. Mm. Since we have baby dragon in the next hand, maybe ice was is better because then I won't have a ground unit if I play knight first. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go ice was at like 220. Like I said, you want to wait a little bit with this deck, but not all the way. All right, so we're gonna drop our ice whiz there. Here we go, lava hound. I feel like we have to graveyard into this, which is unfortunate. Otherwise, ice whiz is just dying for free. We'll snipe the minions here, hopefully. Kind of. Oh, I did not. I thought that was gonna stay on the lava hound. Kind of a bad poison. We're gonna bomb tower here. The death bomb will take out the minion horde. I mean, not good, but what am I gonna do there? I didn't have enough elixir for ice with NATO, so not a bad play by him. It was, which I'd started night and said my ice was out of cycle, so. I think at this point in the game, we're just going to knight there, and then we're just going to ignore the minions. I don't think we can graveyard. He's just going to guards, and that's a lot of value for him. We're going to baby jack here. Uh, I thought maybe it would pull the minions. It didn't. Oh, well. We're going to poison NATO. That worked out pretty well. We're gonna go aggressive here when he tries to if he tries to lava. He's oh he's way behind the elixir too. This is fine. I actually don't mind that. I don't even need a NATO there. 
We're just gonna keep up pressure here. Our troops are still super healthy. Oh, that was really nice. We're just gonna night hit a pressure. A graveyard poison will take it. There's that. We'll pull this as far as possible. I'm not gonna say that does pull. Oh, he let knight take. I thought I was gonna have to graveyard poison. Hey, what a, what a nice comeback. That's actually kind of hard. Um, it's definitely easier with bomb tower. <laughs> Especially against minion horde when you're about to lose your tower. Uh, the defensive minion horde paid off though. I, okay, I'm happy that after after the troubles of recording this video three times, we have a great uh, a great game to end it off. Uh, top 600 ish. And uh, yeah, that was fun. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy these new meta decks. And I will see you again tomorrow. Peace.